main things that I see holding people back from starting to read the Bible is that they just don't think that they're going to understand it. Well, in this video, we are going to be breaking down everything you need to know about the New Testament so you can start reading it today with confidence. What's up everybody, this is Ronnie. And Mel. And on this channel we give you weekly tools and inspiration to help you find God and walk with Him in your daily life. So if that's something you need, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Also, we have a free gift for you at the end of this video that will help you as you dive into the Bible, so make sure you don't miss it. So if you're new to the Bible, it can be really intimidating to get started, especially if you don't know the difference between an apostle and an epistle. So today we're going to dive into an overview of the New Testament so you can understand it for yourself. We always say this, but the Bible is not just any book. It's God's story. It's history. His story. The Bible is made up of 66 different books that's divided into two main sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. For an overview of the Old Testament, we have a video on that, so be sure to check it out. As far as the New Testament goes, there are 27 different books and they're divided into three different sections. First, we have the narrative books. Next, we have the epistles. Then we have one prophetic book at the end. So let's break down each one of those sections and walk you through the New Testament storyline. The narrative books are made up of four books called the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The word gospel actually means good news. And the good news is the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Each four of these books tell the story of Jesus' coming in a different perspective and to a different audience. Some focus more on what Jesus did, others focus more on what Jesus said, and one focuses primarily on who Jesus is, his nature and his character. In these books we see the life and the ministry of Jesus. And we see how Jesus was that coming king that the Old Testament scriptures had promised. We see how Jesus resisted sin and temptation. We see how he walked in the power of God to heal the sick and raise the dead. And we see how he willingly laid down his life to save the world from their sins and to reconcile man back to God. He was then raised by God, conquering sin and death, and is now seated at the right hand of God the Father, where he awaits his coming kingdom, and he defeats evil, and he brings heaven and earth together. While he was on the earth, his followers were called disciples, and he taught the multitudes how to live rightly before God. From all his disciples, he chose 12 that would be his leadership team. At the end of his time on earth, he commissioned his 12 disciples to go back into all the earth and to preach the good news. To go and make more disciples that would do even greater works than even Jesus had done. And this leads us into the other narrative book. The Acts of the Apostles, or what most of us refer to as the Book of Acts, was the story of Jesus' followers after his death. The 12 disciples were filled with God's spirit and power, and though they were greatly persecuted, they preached the gospel, and they walked in the very same power of God that Jesus did, and the church grew mightily. The word apostle means sent one, and the rest of these books are the stories of the men sent out by God. The early half of this book mainly focuses on the apostle Peter, which is interesting because he was the one that denied Jesus. So never believe the lie that you're disqualified by God and you can't be used by him. The second half of the book of Acts focuses on a man named Saul. He was a Jewish leader who wanted to kill all of the Christians just like they killed Jesus. But Jesus radically encounters this man, gives him a new name, Paul, and this man becomes one of the greatest leaders in all of church history. We we're taken through the ministry of Peter, Paul, and all the rest of the apostles, and we we're seeing churches being built all throughout the world. All but one of these men would go on to be martyred for their faith in Jesus, but their labor was never in vain. Even to this day, millions of people are being impacted by their ministry. After the narrative books, we have what are called the epistles. And all that those are, are letters that were written from the apostles to different churches in the time of the first century church. The first section is all the letters of Paul. After that, there's another section that has some smaller letters written by Peter and John, Jesus' stepbrother James, and there's a few others. One thing to note is that Paul's letters actually aren't in chronological order, but instead they're ordered by size, so largest to smallest. So with that, it's helpful to understand what was going on at the time that he wrote each book. 
also Paul's letters are named by the church that he wrote that letter to. So for example, 1st and 2nd Corinthians was sent to the church in Corinth and so on and so forth. These letters can instruct us today in how we are to live before God just like they did to the church in that day. They give us God's perspective on all different subjects that we can apply to our life today. The last section, the prophetic writings, just includes one book the revelation of Jesus Christ, or as most people refer to it, the book of Revelation. Most people get tripped up because the book of Revelation might seem like a bunch of symbolism or some type of doom and gloom book. But if you actually look at it a little bit closer and get some understanding, you actually find it to be a great book of hope for those who know their God. One thing that is important to note is that this book is entitled The Revelation of Jesus Christ. So this means that there is much we can learn about Him in this book. What He's like, who He is, and what He plans to do. And so it shouldn't be something that we write off. So let's dive right in. The book of Revelation begins with a few messages to the churches of that day. It goes on to give us an amazing view of what heaven looks like as God is seated on his throne. And the rest of the book shows us the entire end time plan of God. This includes things like God's end time judgments to remove evil from the earth, how he will give the entire earth the opportunity to turn to him and repent, how he will save his people Israel, and how he will unite heaven and earth together forever. The book of Revelation is our future hope when we get to be with him forever. And there is a lot of things coming in the future that we must prepare for. The book of Revelation uses a lot of Old Testament passages that are being fulfilled in that day to give us God's full end time story. So as you can see, the New Testament really is the fulfillment of the Old Testament and it's the second half of God's story. You need to have them both to really understand it all. It was all pointing to and waiting for Jesus' first coming and it will all be fully fulfilled in his second coming. So if you want to dive even deeper into understanding the Bible, Unlocking the Bible by David Pawson is a great resource. So if you want to grab it for yourself, you can find it below in the description. So we hope this helps you guys understand the New Testament, the life of Jesus in the early church, and how it relates to you and me. Also, if you want help understanding the Old Testament and how the two fit together, we actually have a video on that, so you can find it down in the description below. And if you're new to this journey, we actually have a Bible for Beginners guide to help you navigate these initial steps. All you gotta do is click the link below in the description and we'll send it to you for free. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you think it might help someone you know, make sure to share it because you never know the difference that you can make in someone else's life. And we wanna hear from you guys, so be sure to comment below and let us know what is the most helpful thing that you learned today about the New Testament. Well, we hope this helps you on your journey to find God and walk with Him and we will see you next time.